Hi, I'm Dave Adams. Welcome to TJ and the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet. One of the things that we absolutely love is Christian movies. And uh, we'll talk about another movie, uh, The Jesus Revolution. Went to see that movie in movie theaters. It's up to $30 million in income at the opening um, weekend. It was number three behind the cocaine bear and the latest Marvel uh, venture. So it is, it's comforting to see a Christian film, number three, but a little, dis, a little concerning that a cocaine bear has twice as many uh, viewers, attendees, people that buy tickets that want to see it than want to see a Christian movie. We are in a, a state in our society today when we desperately need traditional family Judeo-Christian values. And we here as a ministry, the Jesus Network, want to do everything we can to support movies, Christian movies in the movie theaters. If we want to change culture, if we want to evangelize, if we want to go out and make disciples like Jesus taught in the Bible, then we need to change culture. We need to have more Christian movies. That's just one of the things we need to do. We're honored once again today to have John Pate as a Zoom guest on TJN. He's the executive producer of a movie called Faith Wins the wild card of the strip. And John, welcome to TJN, the Jesus Network. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And let's go to a placard right now of the movie, Faith Wins. Now you've won a number of awards for this. Uh, we've got the placard up right now on the screen. Uh, what are these down below? You've won a number of Christian movie uh, awards for this film. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, it won the award for the best screenplay, the best Christian screenplay at the Christian Film Festival uh, last year. And once we saw that, we thought, well, I guess we uh, we have something that maybe is marketable. And the other two, one is for writing the theme song, and then one is for the performance of the opening theme theme song that both myself and uh, Jenny Tolman, a country music artist out of Nashville, sang. Uh, she co-wrote it and sang it for us. And so that's her voice that you will hear at the beginning of the film itself. Uh, she just did an incredible job with it. So those three awards, all from the Christian Film Festival, are for Best Theme Song, Best Writer, and Best uh, Screenplay. You think you have it all. Fame. Billy Risto, you are my most favorite entertainer of all time. This is just the fame. Fortune. Hey, Billy. There's a fan outside that would like to meet you and take some pictures. Is that okay? Family. At the top of your game. Maybe even invincible. See you tomorrow. Hey, not if I see you first. <laughs> Keep your day job. But tragedy. And it was raining, it was bad weather. I, I shouldn't oh. have let her go. Self-destruction. Get your boss over here. Get a pit boss. Get somebody over here. I need another marker. Now. Have other ideas. You got no house. You got no job. You can't even pay me. You question everything around you. Seems like anybody could end up here if things go wrong. It's true. Your purpose. I'm just starting to think that maybe we're all here for a reason. Your very being. Look, Billy, I don't know what you need. We all kind of need the same things, but God knows what you need. And I want to try to help you get what you need. From the depths of despair. I just kind of went through a hard, hard time. I lost pretty much everything that, that meant anything to me. From a tortured heart. And it's not on you, man. It's on me. It's all on me. I did it to myself. Now I got to figure out a way to make it right. Only problem is, I don't know how to make it from a wounded spirit. God, God, I, I, I have no idea if you're real, but 
Pastor Emily says that you are. The answers can be found. Remember when I came into the camp and I said, we're all here for a reason? Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, we're all here for a reason. We're right here, right now, in this place and time, for a reason. God gave me a second chance. I'll give it to you. All right, you're back. Faith wins. So the movie is Faith Wind's Wild Card of the Strip, and we watched the trailer of it on uh, our Zoom call today, John Pate. John, tell me why you decided to do this movie. The, uh, the story actually came from my co-executive producer and star of the film, Rich Natoli, the guy that you saw there is the main character. Uh, Rich has a radio show in Las Vegas, an entertainment show, and he's had it for decades now. And the one thing that has really haunted him a lot, uh, be, he's a brand new Christian uh, of, of about three and a half years, and he has been noticing the problem of homelessness there in Las Vegas uh, to epic proportions of, of how many people try to come to Las Vegas and, and strike it rich and, and all of a sudden end up homeless. He saw that and over and over again that had been haunting him uh, just simply uh, uh, seeing the problem there. And he called me one day. I had been on his show several times. He called me and he, he asked me, he said, I've, I've, got the, uh, I've got this story, but I've never written a screenplay. And I said, well, I've written screenplays. If you want to collaborate on it, let's do it. So we wrote the screenplay, the whole story of kind of a, a riches to rags to riches uh, redemption story uh, that you saw there. And we used a lot of the locations there in Las Vegas where these things are happening. Uh, and it, it just really, really impacted him to a point of saying, you know, we've got to do something about it. And the only the only way that you're going to take people out of a situation like that is searching for the answer, which is higher than themselves and going to a higher power and a higher authority that gets us all out of homelessness. And, and that is uh, a walk with Christ. Amen. And uh, homelessness is a serious issue. It's gotten even worse as the economy is is taking a dive, as gas is you know five, six, seven dollars a gallon, uh, it's it's a serious issue. How much does it cost to produce a movie like this? And if you don't mind me asking, how do you how do you finance it? Well, well, this one we were very fortunate. We did it for a little less than fifty thousand dollars total, and that's unheard of. But we really, really had a lot of help. Uh, all of the actors in the film agreed to work for much lower than scale for Screen Actors Guild. And we have about uh, a dozen Screen Actors Guild actors that signed a waiver uh, to be in the film. We have over 25 people in all and half of them uh, just simply signed an agreement. And then on top of that, some of the people felt so strongly about the story of the film that when we did pay them, they turned around and endorsed the check and gave it back to us to, uh, to help pay for the film. Uh, that was such a blessing as well. We got help from uh, city council people to get filming permits uh, uh, fast-tracked. And then my university, uh, I just recent re recently retired as the chair of the communication department at California Baptist University. Uh, before I moved down to Tennessee from my retirement. And so I called up California Baptist University and they gave us the locations, both interior and exterior for a lot of their facilities as well to film for free on those locations. We had a television station in Las Vegas that gave us their studios to film in absolutely free. And, uh, the actors, big, big name actors, Bruce Baum and Rich Little, the great iconic impressionists from Las Vegas, uh, they worked for virtually nothing to be in this film. And uh, so 
the the money itself, uh, uh, God provided that. Uh, I will tell you that uh, we were kind of thinking in the beginning, how are we, how are we going to get this money? Uh, both Rich and I, being entertainers, decided, well, you know what, we're going to put on a series of comedy concert dates. We did live comedy concert dates at churches, in theaters, and even for the Salvation Army, we did them in Tennessee, Alabama, and uh, Las Vegas. And so we told the people, we said, hey, the money for th these concerts, Rich and I are not taking any money at all for it. We are using all of this money to produce this film. So based on the efforts of those uh, comedy concerts and people's donations to the cause, and even at the premiere of the film, once the film was completed, people came to the premiere and paid uh, for the, the ticket for the premiere. And then we had the entire cast autograph and sign a series of about 20 movie posters. We auctioned those off and, and people were very generous and gracious. And, by the time we finished the premiere that evening, all but one of the autograph posters had been auctioned off. So it was amazing how much people pitched in to make sure we had the funding for this film. So as you look at all of the challenges in America today, you and this is just this movie project is another example about how Americans see the need and will work together for a, a joint cause, a common cause to improve the society in which we live. So this is just a great example of, of that kind of community coordinated effort. Why Las Vegas? Why not pick another city? Las Vegas, because we wanted to highlight and, and showcase that this could happen to anybody and it could happen to a big time, big name entertainer that totally crashes and burns and ends up as you saw there, even in the trailer, in a homeless camp, praying over an empty bucket to God to take them out of that situation and find purpose and meaning to their life. And so uh, we, we wanted it to be a high profile character. Rich Natoli is one of the best impressionists in the business, along with Rich Little, who is the iconic figure in Las Vegas. So we wanted that connection. And Rich has a live show there in Las Vegas that he does as well. Uh, so the, a lot of connection there. We ended up using the, the people who were headlining in Las Vegas, uh, uh, Joel Rigetti, Bruce Baum, uh, Dick Hardwick, uh, you name it, uh, the, the people who were there, uh, Sabrina Placencia. Uh, all of those people are Las Vegas performers, have their own tribute shows, have their own headline shows in Las Vegas. And uh, so we wanted to be able to use as many entertainers from Las Vegas as we could to show the situation there in the city of Las Vegas. And that's just one city. There are other cities that suffer even worse. San Francisco, Chicago, New York, Atlanta, all, every single major city that you can think of has this homeless problem, but uh, because of the entertainment connection there in Las Vegas, we decided to, to make it someone who is seemingly successful and think they have it all on their own and have it under control. But in the end, when everything comes crashing down around you, who are you gonna turn to? Well, in this case, the entertainer, the character Billy Rizzo turns to God. Amen. So as we look at the slide here, the picture of, of uh, Las Vegas, you wouldn't think that Las Vegas would be a, a city where homelessness is an issue because you look there and all you see is money and bright lights and fame and fortune, all the big name entertainers. It's such a difference. It, it, it's such a, it's a great city to have a movie like this because it shows that even in a big city like, like Las Vegas, there is a real problem with homelessness. Indeed. The, and in the actual, when, when people watch the film, and we certainly want people to go and watch this film, uh, as of this morning, we do have over 50,000 views on just one platform alone. 
we want that to be over 100,000 views on one platform alone by the end of March. It would be incredible to have that. Uh, and the film's only been out a month and, and to have that many views of, of, of a tiny little independent film uh, is it says something for faith-based films, much like the the Jesus Revolution says something for faith-based films on a large scale. Um, in this particular case in Las Vegas, you do see all of the wealth and success and lights and glitter there, even in that photo. But in the opening credits of the film, as the car drives down the street, the first night that we got in Las Vegas, my director took his camera and just leaned out the window. And as you saw the car drive by the sidewalk, you saw all of those homeless people lined up on the sidewalk as the credits roll at the very beginning of the film. And that is a little, about a quarter of a mile from downtown Fremont Street in Las Vegas. So while we see all of this success and fame and glitter on one end of the strip, you see the homelessness and problems dealing with the humanness of people being completely lost on the other end of the on the other end of the street the comparative illustration is just uh, eye opening and we look at a slide here and i think this was during the covid pandemic where they they actually painted squares on a parking lot and allowed homeless people this is your square to sleep for the night and this yes, just makes a stark uh, statement about humanity and and uh, you know there, therefore, the grace of God go I. And Jesus said, when, when did we serve you, Jesus? And when he said, when you serve the least of these. This is an example of the least of these. Exactly. And that's at the Cashman Center there. That's amazing. How do people yeah. watch this movie? Uh, they can go to the YouTube channel and type in G-A-G-O. And that is Green Apple Entertainment, G-A-G-O. And once you get into G-A-G-O, if you scroll down, it's going to be the second or third film listed there uh, in the YouTube channel. Uh, and that was just one of the free channels that people can watch it on. We now have seven different streaming platforms along with YouTube. I jotted these down only because uh, uh, they called us and, and told us about all of the different streaming platforms that have been added. Along with YouTube, you can type in G-A-G-O on Roku television. You can also uh, access it on 24 Flicks beginning the middle of March. It's not on yet on 24 Flicks, but it will be on 24 Flicks in the middle of March. It's also on U Udu Digital. That's U-D-U -U Digital. It's on Hoopla Digital. If you have a library card in North America and you go to any public library, you can access and download this film on Hoopla and Biblio in the library for a free viewing on Hoopla Digital and Biblio in the library. And then at the end of this month, the end of March, it is also going to be on Fandango. Uh, and it will be there as well. So that's one, two, three. Yeah, that's seven different platforms that either is available or will be available by the middle and end of this month. Do you have any other projects that you're working on? This is the only film project that I'm working on right now. Uh, I'm enjoying my retirement. And in fact, uh, this film being a part of my retirement, I really enjoyed and appreciated that. Uh, the good thing about it is a lot of little side benefits came from it that I didn't know about films. Uh, one of the things that our distributor suggested that we do as soon as we got the film edited and finished, they, they said that one of the big feathers in our cap would be to submit it to the Dove Awards, uh, dove.org, for family-friendly viewing, and we submitted it and got the family-friendly seal of approval from the doveawards.com, and uh, we were just very, very pleased with the great review that they gave this film as being a family-friendly film that everybody can watch, and even 
while it's speaking to a very, very difficult problem of homelessness, it also speaks to the, pro the positive of hope through salvation in Christ. So we were very blessed to receive the Dove Award and uh, uh, the Dove Seal of Approval uh, to be added to this film as well. We would recommend that churches, especially churches, but evangelical organizations, but churches especially because you, are, you already have a built-in audience with your congregation, to have a movie night, a Christian movie night. And we're looking at doing uh, an outreach here in uh, the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. And the, probably the first film that we'll feature will be John Pate's film, Faith Wins. And we're working on a location to show this. But your church, your organization can have movie nights. And, yes, and uh, we, we will do it absolutely free. Uh, I will bring the film and introduce the film to the audience and certainly do a question and answer with people and, and meet and greet the people afterward uh, and tell them anything that they want to know about the film. We've done two of them already in Las Vegas, and we did one in Collinsville, Alabama, in churches and uh, uh, groups and civic, uh, civic arenas there. And uh, we're looking to to offer it to as many churches that want an outreach movie night just to be able to show the film to their congregation. So uh, if, if there is a church that's interested, I would love to be able to bring the film and, and talk about the film and, and show it to the congregation. Movies are a great way to engage those who, to give them a reason to go to church. If you say, hey, come and watch the free movie and it gets them in the door of the church and presents the gospel in a very entertaining and engaging way. Uh, it's a great evangelical tool. And, and churches, you know, I think you're missing the boat here if you don't use Christian movies. Another, th another reason why we need to use Christian movies is we need to influence Hollywood. Hollywood will look at what is successful at the box offices. There is a saying out there that you get the government you deserve, and I guess you get the movies you deserve. If that's what you go to watch, that's what they're going to produce more of. So if we sit at home and say, gee whiz, I wish they would make more family-friendly movies. I wish they would make better movies, Christian movies. Then we as Christians need to support these movies. Because as we support these movies, Hollywood will go where the money is. Follow the money. And exactly. one um, great way to evangelize is just support Christian films. Exactly. One of the great uh, things that the Irwin brothers, and those are the producers of uh, the Jesus Revolution, but they, they've, also, uh, they've also done a lot of other faith-based films, Woodlawn. In fact, the, there was an Oscar nomination from Woodlawn for uh, John Voight, who I, I would say he's a friend of mine. I know him in Los, in, from Los Angeles, but uh, you know we, we're not on like a first name basis, but I've uh, worked with him and, and met him on several different occasions. And we even did a TV show together once. But uh, the Irwin brothers put that film out and they are incredible faith-based uh, executive producers. And the if you're familiar with the Movie Guide Magazine Awards every year, the one thing that the founder of that organization, Mr. Ted Baer, tells Hollywood very, very boldly that 80% of the box office receipts come from G and PG and family friendly films. 80% uh, of the box office receipts. Now, obviously, you see something like this, uh, this other film. Okay, um, Bear. That is, yeah, that is number one right now. But when you look down the line at all of the other family friendly films that follow it, you might have a breakout film, but even when you look at a film like Top Gun, which is a, a, a PG film, it's not one that has a lot of, uh, of uh, vulgar language or anything, and it's not necessarily a faith-based film, but it's one that people go see, and that was a box office smash as well. So when we talk about those types of films, that is 80% of box office revenue, but when we get to the point where something like the Jesus Revolution reaches such a powerful opening weekend that it's third out of all of the secular films and, and every single film in, in theaters, 
that tells you that people are yearning for something better. People are yearning for something more. And I believe you're right, Dave, that, that the, the nation and the world as a whole is starving right now uh, looking because we're kind of in limbo the, the, uh, uh, as a direction of, of what to do coming out of a pandemic and coming out of, of struggles around the country and wars. And, and uh, you would almost think that, that we are in the last days, but at the same time, you look at it and people should realize you can turn in any, any different direction, but if you are turning in the direction of Christ and turning in the direction of salvation, that's really where people need to be seeking and finding the answers. Yeah, when we look at the state of society today and a well-known uh, person that works on relations, it says, how's that working for you? Um, exactly. Exactly. When, we, when we look at what's uh, going on in society today and, and giving all this stuff free range and carte blanche to just have its way with our society, how's that working for you? It's not working too well. Uh, we're a big advocate of Judeo-Christian values and the golden rule, treat others like you would like to be treated. But we need to, at this point in, in our society, in our life, um, one of the things that on another platform we talk about is what kind of a world, what kind of a nation do you want to leave for your children? One of my motivators is when I look at a young child and say in 10, 20 years when this child grows up, what kind of a world are they going to live in? What kind of a world are we going to leave for them? What kind of a nation are we going to leave for them? Uh, and we, we're kind of at a crossroads in America today. We can go either way. Uh, and we need to, as Christians and as Americans that love freedom and love this country and love family values, we need to make a strong statement and say, this is the kind of country we want. These are the kind of movies we want. And the movies, I think, uh, reflect society. We need to change our direction and strongly, strongly support movies like Faith Wins and, and others. Uh, in fact, we've made it a major a goal of this ministry to support faith-based movies. Well, and, and we certainly appreciate it because uh, when you see the need that's out there, uh, we've almost gotten to the point, and, and even thankfully, we've start, started to see a little bit of the pushback of victimization and victim mentality where anything goes because we blurred the line between right and wrong. And all of a sudden you see people saying, no, parents should be able to take back control of how their children are educated. And we want them educated in a, an environment that uh, is wholesome and an environment that turns them a different direction from what the world sees and uh, not just in education, but especially in entertainment, because right now with social media and with entertainment, having been where it is, God's given us a platform too. And God has given us a format and that platform really should be something that we're utilizing and uh, spreading the message even more. If people want to donate to your effort, uh, how can they do that? Uh, the we have the faith, uh, excuse me, the Pate Faith Wins Project. That is the actual production company of the film. It was up on GoFundMe. Uh, we took that down once the film was finished. However, we still have uh, a a fairly good amount of expense on the film. If they want to reach out to me, they can certainly donate and and. Uh, donate to the F Pate Faith Wins Project, uh, but they'd have to email me at my uh, entertainment email, which is john, J-O-H-N, dot Pate, P-A-T-E, to the number two, at sbcglobal.net. And if they email me, I can tell them the uh, the production name where they could write a check to and donate uh, for the project itself if they certainly want to be a, a part of it we would love to have them just be a partner in in making this film and we've also created the website called jesusfaithmovies.com 
or we feature trailers and we feature the full um, full length version of the Faith Wins Wild Card of the Strip on that website, um, JesusFaithMovies.com. Our parent website at this ministry is the JesusNetwork.net. And uh, the Jesus Network is part of the outreach of USA Heartbeat Inc., which is a 501c3. So donations to this ministry are tax deductible as well. And you'll find a donation link at um, uh, soon at JesusFaithMovies.com and the JesusNetwork.net, uh, as well as our USAHeartbeat.com website. Uh, John, thank you for being with us today. We're looking forward to putting together a uh, church location. Yes. That to, to show this movie. And then one of the things we like to do or want to do when we show movies, and this will be the first one that we show, uh, we'll be engaged with the audience and get their takeaway and, and pray about Christian movies and, and just get involved. And, and uh, because we just need to use these as a tool to in, in expand the kingdom of God. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and just really eager to present it to the churches in this area. And uh, I, I thank you for the opportunity for kind of spearheading that for us here in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Okay, John Pate, uh, looking forward to working with you in the future. And thank you for being with us on this version of looking at uh, Jesus Faith Movies here at TJN, the Jesus Network. Uh, thank you. I'm Dave Adams. And thank you for being with us. This is TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet.